Do I need to go up? There we go. Alright. Yeah, let's turn that up. There we go. Alright. I think we're getting somewhere. So, here's what's going to happen. I am going to be calling Tom Gimble of Foreigner shortly. And going to have him on a live stream. I am trying to be as redundant as possible. So, I've got this recording onto my audio recorder. But also live streaming to Facebook right now. I'd really appreciate a share if you're a Foreigner fan or if you love Kamloops. Or if you want to see more awesome acts, come to Kamloops. You know, I appreciate a like, a share, whatever it be. Um, you know, you can decide if I earn it. And that's cool with me. So, without further ado, I'm going to actually burn three more minutes. Because I said I'd call him at 12.15. I believe I'm calling him... Uh, I'm guessing, and his home in California. I, I actually did a little bit of research on him, and, and basically, Foreigner is the band that uh, you know all the songs to, but you don't know the name of the band. They're actually a top ten radio played rock band, so like, and they've been around since the 70s. So they're coming to Kamloops February 24th. Um, so it's going to be a big concert, and uh, I'm excited to chat. I'm excited to chat with them, see what uh, what um, they have to say. You know, Tom, Tom, he plays a whole bunch of instruments. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the sax man, from what I've uh, read. You know, which isn't much. It's Wikipedia, right? Like, the, I was chatting with my neighbor actually. Uh, her name's Joan. She's gonna be going to the concert in February. Um, hoping to take her grandson to his first rock concert. Uh, she's like, yeah, that's fine. She's totally cool with the, you know, the fact there's been so many band members um, gone through, but it's because the music hasn't changed. It's like, it's like Foreigner's almost become like, like, like Foreigner's gone beyond what, uh, oh, I gotta change that quickly because I don't have a SOCAN license. You know, what that means is I, uh, I'm not paying you know, music licensing and whatever be. Instead, what I did is I asked my friend Jesse Nic Nicholson, Jesse Nicholson from high school, um, to, you know, send me a cover of him singing Foreigner. And he's he's been doing bands and stuff for a long, long time. So I gave him the, the opportunity, and he's like, yeah, totally. So you can check him out. Uh, he is, Leaf Grizzly is the name of his, like, rap uh, name, but he's also got like uh, other projects as well. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna press play to him. It's gonna play in the background. And uh, now what I'm going to do, Nevin, I'm gonna make sure my effects are on. As I'm gonna Sorry. now call. I hope it suck. <coughs> I'm gonna call. Our man here, take a and I'm gonna have to use a Hangouts dialer because I don't have international over. calling. So free calling thanks to Google. Shout out Google. Here we go. Eight one. All right. That's right. This is absolutely Whoa. live. Hi, Tom. Yeah. Hi, Tom. My name's Nevin. We're live right now on Cameo Podcast, live streaming on Facebook. Fantastic. I hope Good that's okay. you guys. Yeah, thanks for, for agreeing to talk with me. Uh, how's the audio on your side? Can you hear me? Yeah, pretty good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you quite well as well. I'm not sure if you can hear in the background, but I... Uh, I requested my friend Jesse Nicholson, aka Leaf Grizzly, to sing a, a cover song of "I Want to Know What Love Is," and, and so it's playing in the background right now. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. Just you know, I, I I was I had to do my research for this podcast. I'll be honest; I normally don't have to research oh, people. That's great. And I was that just like, "Oh my gosh! Good. I can't believe all the songs that I know 
you guys uh, sing, but I didn't actually put the band's name to the song. You know what I mean? Yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. It happens a lot nowadays. And so just people play on the radio and they don't say who it is. Yeah. And so you've been with the band since 92. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. So that was the year I was born. Not to, you know. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I like it. And, and so what, what instruments do you play uh, for the band? What position? So in I Want to Know What Love Is, in uh, the iconic part where it's like, I want to know what love is. What are you doing at that point? Yeah. I have a, like, uh, sometimes I play the keyboards on that one, and sometimes I play kind of a Jimi hendrix kind of clean guitar. You know, just really nice, clean, bell-like electric guitar. Okay, so ding, you, ding, ding, you, ding. Yeah. you jump around positions in the band? I sure do. I go from guitar to keyboards to sax to flute and sing a bunch in between. So, so it's almost like your band is more like, in a way, like an orchestra of instruments. Like, I was saying, like, Foreigner, yeah. I was talking to my neighbor. She's going to be at your, your concert on the 24th in Kamloops here, uh, Joan. And she was saying, like, she's okay with, like, how many members have been in and out of the band because the music hasn't changed. That's true. We stay really true to the original, and we always have Mick Jones there making sure that everything is just right. So how did you get involved? When did you uh, – what happened in 92 that made you uh, jump on board? I had, uh, I had been on the road with Aerosmith for a couple of tours, and uh, Mick Jones's brother called me up, Kevin Jones, and uh, he said, would you like to – is it true you play all these instruments and sing? I said, oh, yeah, you called the right number. <laughs> and so – he said, uh, instead of audition, the guys just like to meet you. Let's let's all go out to dinner. Because they wanted to find out what kind of person you are. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be joining a band and going on the road and spending a lot of time together, the personality thing is kind of important to me, if you know what I mean. Totally. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I had been recommended to them by a friend of mine over a golf game. He was playing golf with uh, someone from Atlantic Records. And they said, Foreigner is looking for a guy that plays guitar, sax, maybe some keyboard singing and my friend ricky phillips said i got the guy i got the guy so were, were so you on, very lucky were you on the radio at that point had, or was was foreigner your first time being on the radio oh i had i had certainly done a, a fair amount of uh all kinds of television radio and uh live performing live performing awesome is, is this gonna be your first time visiting kamloops um uh, i'm kind of guessing we've probably been through that area before i feel like i've been around the world a couple of times and, and i do remember being up there when the snow was so cold that they couldn't even turn the trucks off they were afraid they would freeze <laughs> it doesn't get that <laughs> cold in kamloops but uh we're in like this temporal desert it's uh it's a bit of an oddity in, in bc where are you located out of what what uh where's home for you I live in Southern California in Sherman Oaks. Oh, awesome. Right outside of Los Angeles, or inside of Los Angeles. When when did you, like, feel like you became a rock star? When, when did that click for you? I I don't know if we ever really think about it as term, in terms of being a rock star. I always just wanted to be a good musician and, and work really hard at it. And if I, if I get some success... I need some luck and some hard work. Maybe I'll have some success. So we're we're thankful anytime we get to go and you, you hand in your passport and it says musician. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's success. The fact that that's my vocation, the fact that that's what I do for a living, that feels like success to me. I feel very fortunate. Totally. I, w- I was checking out your guys' Spotify. You had like five million fans last month. That's huge. Yeah. But. This music continues to really uh, grow and retain, and it's 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 really held up over over the ages in a magnificent fashion. This music is timeless, and I never get tired of it. I love all these songs. Every time we play them, there's never a moment where I'm like, "Oh man, this song again." No, I love every one of them. They are a blast. What's and the especially when the audience is rocking out with us? What's the last song that you cried to? Oh, 
that's a tough question. I think it would probably be one of those dog commercials where they show the dog as a puppy and then he gets <laughs> older and older. That makes me but that's cry. manufactured to make that happen, right? Like, like what what was the yeah. last song that like just spoke to you and you're just like, because because for me I I listen to a lot of this new SoundCloud hip hop world, right? Where where you know it's it's sure. literally kids in setups, much like the one I'm calling you from, right? Like. You know, as sure. music changes, it still has that same power, right? Even though it sounds different. Yeah, I think uh, you know maybe some of that Amy Weinstein, Weinstein, or oh, the yeah. Adele song when she talks about "You could have been the one." One of those songs you might get a little uh, emotional. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I was checking you out, it looks like uh, you've done a few kind of podcast interviews are you the are you the chatty one of the group uh what which would you be like baby spice posh spice like which backstreet boy character are you <laughs> not necessarily i think we all do a lot of interviews and we're all pretty talkative i can tell you that from hanging out with these guys but uh they asked me to, to chime in so i'm always happy to do so yeah i certainly appreciate it you know i am just you know a dad with a bunch of funny equipment picked up from the local music shop where would you like to see the music industry go in the future? What do you, what do you think, you know, needs to happen uh, in the music industry in this age of disruption? I like I like the music industry. I, I like everything that happens, uh, and and when people are are enjoying it, that's the key for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether I like it, but when I see people rocking out or thumping out having a good time. It makes them want to move. It makes them want to dance or sing or shout. That is what I think is the important part. And uh, it doesn't matter to me whether it's hip hop, classical, jazz, people get a kick out of music and it, it's an important part of their lives. So for me, I'm just glad to, to see that it's still doing that. I hope it never goes away. You'll see it everywhere you go. There's just stores or restaurants, bus stations, <laughs> airports. Music is always there. Mm -hmm. and if, if you take it away, you'll notice there's a real space. Uh, we just like it because it adds motion to the air. You know, there's something moving, and I love that. So I, I think it's here to stay for sure. Have you seen like a change in your audience in recent years, or or, or what, what do you think happens to Foreigner in like ten years from now? Yeah, it's it's continuing to grow. We have a large span of ages. Um, young people discovering this music mm -hmm. they find it from the parents and uh just middle-aged young people and then up to contemporaries people from our era that were around when this music first came out so it really does it it, it covers a large cross-section of age groups and it's continuing to grow we see more and more people uh, of the younger age coming to the shows and discovering and saying, we love this stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, rock music is still alive and well, especially in the live performance area. Totally. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, we're all, we're all able to perform at this point with, with our cell phones or whatever it be, and you have to embody the, the spirit of performer. What sort of uh, pointers can you give to these aspiring musicians who, who are still figuring out how to perform in this new world we live in? I've always thought the main thing is to, to play from uh, with as much emotion as possible. They say play from the heart. As long as you put your heart and soul into it, uh, it's going to be good. But you, you certainly need to practice and take lessons. Or I don't know if people take lessons anymore. You can go to YouTube and, and find anything you want to <laughs> learn. But the thing about taking lessons is you have a teacher watching what you're doing and saying, yeah, you know, you need to work on this or you might want to make this a little bit better. That's the importance of having a teacher that watches you and getting some input and feedback. But it's really always been the same uh, remedy. <laughs> if you have a driving desire to do it, you've got to stay with it mm -hmm. and uh, follow your dreams, you know, all this, all this traditional values we call them rock values traditional and it works every time as long as you stay with it yeah awesome what uh what's the last instrument instrument you uh, taught yourself there tom and is it tom with an h or is it t-o-m i'm seeing both i like both i, I like both <laughs> there's t 
Tom, Tommy, Thomas, Tom. Uh, lately, I've been going by T-O-M, <laughs> but that's just to keep it simple. Uh, the last instrument I picked up was probably the baritone saxophone. The baritone saxophone. So how many instruments yeah. do you play at this point? And which is your favorites? And how do you well, choose which one you're going to play? If you count up all the saxophones, there's four right there. There's baritone, tenor, alto, and soprano. And then there's flute, uh, clarinet. So what we're up to six. Uh, guitar is seven. Keyboards is eight. I play a little harmonica, that's nine, <laughs> and some clarinet, call it ten. And singing, singing is really the most important one of all, so let's call it even eleven. Do you guys take turns, or, or, or I guess you all have your, your different harmonies during the song, or, or is it a very fluid uh, change of, of which position you play? Yeah, you're right. We, we do uh, harmonize and we make those nice background vocals. That's a lot of fun singing as a group and uh sometimes we bounce around on the instruments too our keyboard player will get on the bass our bass player will get on the keyboards i've uh, i've gotten on the drums oh i forgot to mention the drums so we're up to 12 that's a nice <laughs> dozen so, uh and yeah so sometimes i get on the drums that was my first instrument i love playing the drums it's a great cardio workout and uh anyone i always thought that everyone should have a set of drums just to get out any kind of uh, anxiety or well, I'm, I'm currently, currently sitting on a drum stool, but I don't own a set of drums myself. What uh, what no, bands are you great. listening to on Spotify or, or wherever you get your music? Apple Music. Who uh, who you've been listening to I, lately? I still listen to a lot of Steely Dan. I have a, a little bit of, of jazz in my background, and uh, so I love Steely Dan and. A lot of the Motown stuff, the uh, rhythm and blues. I love uh, Marvin Gaye and Al Green. Those are probably the three of my favorites. Uh, of course, Otis Redding, all that stuff. Just it really resonates with me. Awesome. What's what's something that uh, in in your whole career as a musician, you've probably done a lot of interviews. What's something you've always wanted to chat about but haven't had the chance to to put out there? Possibly. Um, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, yes. In <laughs> those days of prog rock, it's it's funny to think that they ruled the landscape uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. Those were the biggest bands in the land. And uh, it's almost like a chapter of history that got forgotten in a lot of places. So, so uh, which bands were these again? Yeah, we don't. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. See, I've never and, heard of them yeah. at all. Yeah, I know. It was a long time before you were born. And uh, there's a song by Emerson, Lake and Palmer called From the Beginning. You might want to check it out. Will do. When, when it's did, absolutely beautiful. When did you first find out about Foreigner, since they've been going since, like, 1976, and you joined in, like, 92? <laughs> Everybody knew about Foreigner when they hit the radio. Uh, feels like the first time came on the radio, and it, you could tell. It was a perfect rock song. It still is. The absolute perfect rock song. And by the time Hot Blooded hit the airwaves, every car had an 8-track tape player in it. And it just it sounded so good on a car stereo, not to mention a real stereo. So, yeah, I would say as soon as they came out, everybody knew about Foreigner. What, what has been, like, the biggest shock to you in, like, the growth of, like, the music industry especially within the rock scene since you know you you got decades of of watching it beyond me sure i think it's been kind of uh, amazing to see how rock music has kind of turned into country rock music mm -hmm. you know as as far as guitars and, and drums and stuff the country rock that's being made today is very close uh to the rock from the old days and along those lines, the uh, the techno music, all done with synthesizers and computers, is almost reminds me of the old days of Pink Floyd, which had what we used to call spacey, kind of trippy sounds. And that was that was the only place that you would find those kind of uh, sounds and textures. And nowadays, if you want to hear that stuff, it's going to be techno, probably, or trance, or chill, different names. 
Yeah. But I, I love that stuff. It's like ear candy, you know? It just sounds so good for the ears. Yeah, well, it, I guess it's just like we don't have to, like, pay for the tape that we're recording on anymore. There's, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there's, so true. So it cost true. me 130 bucks to, to buy my first microphone, and that's it. Right? What's, what's Yeah. Right, you're in your laptop, you're ready to go. Yeah, and then I buy one thing, and then I, I, I can slowly build it up. Like, what did it cost you back in the day to, like, put a record out? Like, to, or to buy, you know, an hour's studio time? Oh, yeah. An hour's studio time was probably $120, which was a lot of money in the 70s and 80s. Nobody had enough money to go in and make a whole album. When, when a band signed a record contract to make an entire album, the budget would sometimes be between two hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. So seriously, wow. yeah. So that was the dream, you know, to get into the studio and make an album. That was always everybody's dream, and the only way you could do it was to be in a band that signed to get a record deal. Uh, and so people eventually started getting home studios, but those were expensive too. Mm -hmm. And then it's all now done on a laptop. And uh, you guys get to save ten or twenty thousand dollars. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, and it, well, even more if you count all the failures and you know the the wasted time oh. messing with knobs and whatnot, right? So, yeah, that took a lot of time. You're absolutely right. My my, my biggest fear actually for this uh, this call is this is actually like the first time I've done this setup um, to the degree that I yeah, have, yeah. and I was like, oh no, if I mess this up, he'll he'll never talk to me. <laughs> Just hope that technology works for us and that we don't work for it. Yeah, exactly, right? I tried to make it redundant yeah. so that uh, I have a safety net. Um, cool. What, what, what do, you know, we, I've had you on the phone for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. What, what are just some parting words that you think you want to just share with, with any musicians, artists, you know, that, that you just want to get out there, put on wax, and uh, we can wrap up our, our conversation unless you have anything you want to talk about? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, we want people to know how much we appreciate everyone that comes to the shows and rocks out with us. That's something that uh, we can't stay, say enough about. And, um, you know, we also want to encourage people to keep the music in their schools. A lot of schools are having their music programs taken away. So if, if there's any way you can uh, talk to the the superintendent of schools or the board of education and say, Hey, you know, we like having music in the schools. It's great for kids. It's great for adults too. Oh yeah. That's but, right. Uh, you guys are, you guys are donating some stuff to the Camelot school of the arts choir as well. Or yeah. So, so the Camelot school arts we, choir will be performing the band on the band's classic hick. I want to know what love is awesome. And you're donating yes. uh, some cash for at the concert rate monies for their charity partner, the Grammy foundation. So yeah, you're you're trying to keep yes. music in schools. I, I was in band from like grade five to grade eight. I, I stopped in high school, I'll be honest. But uh, you know, I, okay. I, was, I, I was lucky. I learned I learned drums, trumpet, a bit of guitar, drums. I messed around on the xylophone. You know, it's it's fun to have that freedom to jump sure. around and experiment and to play with that creative side of your brain. Absolutely, that's good stuff. So that's one of the messages that we always try to send out. And uh, we're just glad that people are out there rocking with us anytime they want us to. As long as they want us to, we'll keep going. That's awesome. How long do you think you have to, to keep rocking? Like like some of the, the legends, it's amazing how much energy and stamina they have. Um, you can just oh, see definitely. it's powered by passion. Yeah, there's no end in sight for us. That's the name of one of our albums. There's no end in sight. <laughs> Awesome. Well, well, Tom, where can uh, where can people reach out to you or, or find you if you're on the social medias? Sure, I'm on Facebook under the name Thomas T H O M A S Gimbel, G I M B E L, and by all means, drop by and say hi. Awesome. Well, uh, I'll let you go as I, I slowly fade in, my friend, singing a cover of "I Want to Know What Love Is." <laughs> But uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys do with the Kamloops Choir. That's very exciting. My wife's done some uh, some work with the musician uh, groups here in Kamloops, and uh, 
you know, arts and culture is, is certainly underdeveloped in this town, so I'm excited to see uh, the, the ripples of your concert. Thank you so much for chatting with me today, Tom. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure talking with you. Have a great day. Take care, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. It's uh, Beef Grizzly singing I Want to Know What Love Is. Just random off the cuff. Wanna know what love is. I know you can show me you gotta take a little time. Time to look around me. There's nowhere left to hide. It looks like love has finally found me in my life there's been heartache and pain and I don't know if I can face it again but I can't stop now I've traveled so far to change this lonely life wanna know what love is I need you to show Thanks so much, Jesse, for uh, doing that for me. I appreciate everyone who's tuned in live to the Facebook Live that I had with Tom Gimble, a foreigner. I'm going to also be putting this up on the podcast stream, so you can listen in if you're just joining us now on the live stream. Um, yeah, I want to do more of these live streams, these phone-ins, chat with people who are going to be coming to Kamloops. You know, the, the podcast itself... The idea is you start local, but you can go global. You know, Foreigner is a global entertainment powerhouse coming here to Kamloops, and uh, that's exciting, and I want to see more of that. So uh, if I can do more of these interviews, I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you guys don't uh, criticize, you know, the fact that it is people who are not from Kamloops, but it's people who are coming to Kamloops, which is... It, it brings a lot of money. There's a lot of money in the tourism industry, in the entertainment industry that uh, is underdeveloped in here. And I want to have a small piece of that uh, with my little podcast. So that is what it is. You know, you guys know how to reach me if you have any criticisms. And, and, and I, I certainly need to take the criticism criticism uh, where it's deserved. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Um, and um, other than that, I do have this really neat rig now that uh, allows me to pop up podcasting. So if you want to start a podcast or you've thought about starting a podcast or you have a business and you want to do like six episodes and you don't want to invest in the gear, you can uh, hire me for my equipment and my consultancy and I can help you start a podcast. So there's my short little plug at the end of the, this. Uh, please consider subscribing to the actual podcast feed wherever you find your podcast, Spotify, uh, YouTube, uh, iTunes, wherever it be. I'm on all of them. You can always check out cameo.transistor.fm slash subscribe to see where you can subscribe. And if you have any problems, please, please reach out to me. Um, and leave an iTunes review if you could. iTunes review do help, uh, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Hopefully the audio quality was good and you enjoyed that interview. This format, it is different. I do have one, two, three recorded cameos of my traditional coffee shop podcasting recorded. And additionally, I do have uh, another one to be recorded tomorrow morning with Kathy McLeod, our MP. So uh, be sure to look out for that as well. Uh, those will just be on the podcast feed um, just because I can't truck around all of this equipment all the time. Um, but uh, I like to keep things simple uh, where I can. But, uh, you know, the, this this live stream call-in idea works well. 
Um, and, and I did want to do like a radio show eventually where people could call in and, and, and give their input and their uh, comments about different things around Kamloops and really have that uh, talk back idea that uh, Jimmy Joe Hall kind of brought forth with uh, with his shenanigans. So that's that. Uh, it's Nevin Webster here at Cameo Podcast. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, wherever it be, plug, 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 or just Google me, Cameo Podcast. Um, I've made some news recently uh, concerning Justin Trudeau and a canoeing incident in Kentucky, which was super fun. I had a lot of fun memeing that. So if you need any memeing service, I'm your man. So I'll leave it there. And uh, yeah, thank you once again for tuning in to Cameo, whatever this segment's called. Cheers.